Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this day that you have brought. We thank you for the gift of tongues, Lord. For we know that with that tongue, Lord, you give us for the power of witnesses. For the laws and for the church. And for the evidence for ourselves, Lord. But Lord, we thank you for thinking about us this morning and waking us up in our right minds and putting our hearts and our minds on you when one day before we wasn't thinking that way. So Lord, we come in repentance and ask that you wash us with your blood. Fill us with your spirit. Marinate us within your presence. Saturate us within your glory. That we may be one with you in our minds, spirit, soul, and body. That we may be pleasing unto your sight, being that sweet aroma unto your nostrils, being the apple to your eye, as you become the apple to our eye. Giving you reverence, honor, and respect. For we know that you are our God, and you're God all by yourself. We want to say we love you, Lord, and we thank you. We bless you and we honor you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you into this place. Let your anointing break the yoke of bondage. Severance our minds from anything of trying to figure things out. Help us to understand that you are here. And you're going to do the good work for us. So that our hearts may leave out of here in a different state of mind. Hmm so others can see and taste that you are good. So Father, bring us to the end of ourselves today and take us on that new road of the new journey, of the newness, so that we can say that we are new creations today. Yesterday is gone, and today is new. So we can give you the glory today, the honor today, the reverence today, and the respect. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. How's everybody today? Hallelujah. Let's give him some glory. Hallelujah. 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 I'm sorry pastor's not here today. For those who came to see a man. Hallelujah. Um, but um, we don't come to see a man, we come to see Jesus. Um, my name is David. I am the campus manager for Total Freedom for the new people here. You're welcome to come. Um, this is not my first event being on the, and placed in this position of a teaching. I teach all the time, just that I haven't taught among the congregation for a while. And um, it's an honor. You know, um, at one point I felt I lost my keys. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the physical, I did lose them. But in the physical, I found them. And I keep telling people, I got my keys back. <laughs> you understand? Keys is the key of binding and loosening those things that we need to bind in our lives that keeps us from fulfilling the will of God to help others to get themselves free, to be loose from themselves so they can go and be like a domino effect. Have you ever seen dominoes when they fall and they connect? That's how we're supposed to be, like the internet. We're supposed to be connecting to each other. So we'd be a like-minded spirit so that even when we look at each other, Sometimes you can look at a person you can see already know they're thinking the same thing you're thinking and you only have to say no words. That's how we're supposed to be in oneness within the spirit, to cooperate with each other, to guide with each other, to minister with each other, and to agreement with each other so that there will be no separation between us and the ungodly would see us as connected, as unified, as one. Because they're looking for something real. And we're supposed to be representing the real thing. Amen? Amen? You have to excuse me. I'm not like Pastor. I can't sit down. <laughs> I don't sit. I move. 
That's the way that the Lord uses me. We all are one different purpose in different ways, but we're all doing the same thing, right? Amen. 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 I'm going to try, though. <laughs> really, hey, every day is new. We've got to try something new, right? <laughs> um, uh, we have to cooperate to either to be still or when we have to move. <laughs> A teaching within a teaching, right? <laughs> if not, we will struggle because if we don't cooperate. We must be led by what the Spirit wants to lead us to do because you have to understand the, the Spirit guides us to all truth. And by the truth, that's the only thing that will keep us to maintain the freedom that we have. Amen? Amen. The Spirit of Limitations is attached to those things that we compromise on. So that when we compromise on the things that we know that we're not supposed to be doing, it limits us to apply the truth. Because somebody else is watching and seeing if we're going to abide by that truth or we're going to compromise. And then it takes away the witness when you're supposed to witness to that person. Because you have to understand the devil wants to Eliminate you from being proven to do, be doing the perfect will of God. He wants to make sure that when somebody sees you not doing the right thing, he's going to make sure they see it. He's going to make sure. And when you try to think you're hiding, and Satan likes to wait for the perfect time. Anybody, anybody ever been in that situation? You thought you was okay? Think everything was fine? And in the end, you found that everything was poop? Huh? Yeah. That's how he does us. He deceives us and brings us to the place that thinking that we're okay, and then we find out that we've been deceived. And I don't know about you. I hate being lied to. I hate being deceived, and I hate to be mocked, especially when the things that I know was true, and I didn't listen to it, and I missed it. Then you have to go around the mountain again and start all over again. And then you're trying to harry God, and God ain't going to harry himself because God's trying to purify those things that was unclean and trying to bring off those things so it don't come back on, so you'll learn from it, so you don't fall back into the state of mind of unbelief, doubt, complacency, fear, fear of Pleasing man instead of pleasing God. Amen. Let's go to Ecclesiastic 7. How's everybody today? Hold up. There's more people than a few. How is everybody today? You better, you better let the devil know where you're at. Because he wants you to say nothing. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Now, Ecclesiastes 7, we're going to go to verse 8. And the word of God says, The end of thing is better than its beginning. The patient is in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. How many have us went through things, and when we had listened to God and saw the end result, we was glad that we followed and be, was led by that spirit. And how many times have we did not listen to that spirit, and we saw the end result, and we wish we had not gone through what we went through. Now, you know what takes that is the patience. We have to be patient in the spirit. It's better than the proud. We either patient and humble and be willing to cooperate with the spirit that's guiding us through and be willing to endure it because the proud will not endure the things of hardship. You know, the word says to, be, to endure as hardship as a soldier. Now, you got to understand, we are um, being equipped to be in the army of the Lord. So that means then we have to learn how to use our 
weapons and know how to use our armor to, for protection in the right way. And if we don't know how to use it in the right way, it's like, like this here. If you don't practice something, you can't become it. So imagine you have a sword and you want to use it for battle. And when you pull it out, it's rusty. It has no, it has no sharp edge. Matter of fact, when you pull the handle out, that's all you got. <laughs> There's no blade. <laughs> you can't stab, you can't pierce no hearts, you can't do nothing but have a blade or handle there that has no power. So, and patience, you know, before you go battle, you ever see them, they always take the, the blade and they sharpen it, don't they? At the mill, right, with the stone, and it takes time, and you see the sparks coming up. And they, they, they test it and make sure that it's sharp enough to cut. And, you know, they, they're, they're very patient because if they hit it a little too hard, they'll bleed, right? It's the same thing as a shield of faith. If you're not using your faith, you have holes in your shield. And you're not able to protect yourself from the fiery darts of the enemy. And those are the voices from the stranger. And you're not, now we all are born with a measure of faith. We're all born with the same measure of faith. So not one can say, I can't do, when we're all born with the same. It's up to us to cooperate with that faith to expand it. That's what we have to do. Because we have to expand the faith because it's not our own. It was given from God to, for us to use it, to apply it, so that you can not take the voice of the stranger. So when you hear familiar voice coming to you, you have discernment knowing the difference and separate yourself from it so you can keep maintaining what's yours. Amen? Good. Let's go to Daniel 8. Daniel was a man of patience, wasn't he? He had to go through some stuff, didn't he? He had a king that just didn't want to do right. He tested them in all kinds of ways. But right now we're going to talk about three young boys that was with Daniel. So we're going to read Daniel 3, verse 8. Is everybody with me? It says, Therefore at a time certain Chaldeans came forward and accused the Jews. They spoke and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, palsy, and sympathy, symphony, I'm sorry, with all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the gold image. Excuse me. I see why pastors have a hard time up here. Okay. Where were we? What verse are we at? Thank you. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of providence of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Negro. These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. <laughs> they do not serve your God or worship the gold image which you have set up. Set up. You know, There's a place where we have to have discernment and what we worship on. I know certain people think that um, we're supposed to be the standard of the world. And, you know, as I read this passage and I looked at the beginning, they waited to worship him when they heard the horn. And they played posture and, and they had music. You know, it's very... You have to be very careful of the music you listen to. Because you don't un understand, Satan will want you to compromise going backwards, to go back to the old ways of the world and the music that you used to listen to. And it can bring a, a memory, a thought. It can bring a burden. It can bring a lie to you that you once was free of. And now you compromise and you touch and agree with that song again. And it took you back there. 